Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A Plus certification training course on basic Windows OS functionality. I'm James Messer, and I'll be your host through this course where we're going to talk about Windows operating system and the fundamentals of the Windows operating system. This comes from 220-601, that's the CompTIA Essentials exam for A+, in section 3.1. And then we're really going to step through these basic overview of the Windows environment. If you've ever used Windows before, you're probably familiar with most of this. But for someone who's just entering the operating system world, some of these things will be new to you. We're going to start with the Windows graphical user interface, or something we call the GUI. I'm going to show you where some of the components of that GUI are, the start menu, the taskbar, the system tray, and the quick launch uh, view and screen. We're also going to talk about these uh, icons that you've seen on the screen called My Computer, the Windows Explorer. We're going to talk about My Network Places, something you'll use a lot in Windows. The Command Prompt, the Control Panel, and the Registry. Those last three things are really getting into some of the specifics on things we'll need to know for the rest of the a certification training course. So they'll become very, very important for you as you go out and try to do some things in the operating system down at the lower levels. Let's start with the Windows graphical user interface. There are three very important aspects of the user interface I want to show you. This is the Windows operating system that we see on the screen. I have my icons on the screen. It's a very basic configuration. There's not a lot of different settings in here. And I want to show you first the Start menu. On the, the Windows desktop, on the bottom left corner, is a button that is called Start. If you put your mouse over it, it even tells you, click here to begin. That's what we'd like to do. Everything that you'll need to run in Windows starts at the Start menu. So when we talk about running applications, starting the control panel, starting a lot of the things we're going to talk about today, it all begins in that Start connection. Now there is also across the bottom this task bar. And this is on the bottom right. There's a system tray associated with this task bar. When we start up applications, like I'll start up my Internet Explorer here, and I'll minimize it. I'll put it down at the bottom of the screen. You can see all of our tasks end up going into this task bar. As part of the bottom right side of the screen, this task bar includes a number of icons that are running applications, but they're stored over here in the system tray. One of them, for instance, is our antivirus protection. Another one that I have here is used in this virtual screen that I have now that's a tool set. And I can right mouse click on it, and it gives me options to do different things with the tool set. Or I can go right to the applications I started, like my browser, and go back to what I was doing with my browser screen. So it's nice to have that user interface there so I can move around and do things very quickly and easily. When we also see on the screen a number of icons, and these, these will be on almost every Windows desktop you'll see, this one is called My Computer. This is our interface into the details of our computer, specifically the files and the other devices, components that are installed on that computer. If I double click my computer, it brings up a screen that shows me how I can go right to my shared documents that I have that other people can access, how I can go to my specific file folder that's Professor Messer's documents, and perhaps I can go right to his uh, hard drive. So if I want to modify any of the files, I want to look around the different folders on the hard drive, this view takes me deeper into the hard drive itself. It gives me this graphical display that I can use to look at different files, to rename them, to move them, to copy them, and perform those file functions that normally would have to be done in a command line. But Windows gives us this nice user interface to use. Everything on the Windows desktop has a couple of functions available to it. I double clicked on my computer to open up that screen before. If I right mouse click on my computer, which means I, I put my mouse icon over the icon, I right mouse click on that, I get a lot of different options. Open, which is bold here, is the default when you double click. But there's other things you can do as well. If you wanted to just explore your computer and go right to the files and bypass all of those other screens you had before, you click on that and notice it took us right down to that level. So we saved an extra step just by right mouse clicking and choosing Explore. There are also some other quick things to do here. For instance, manage our computer. We're going to talk more about that in other videos. Or if we just need to connect to a network drive that's somewhere out over our network so that we can share files, we can easily connect to those or map to those in this screen or disconnect from those views. And I've also got some properties if I wanted to look at how my computer is, is designed. Properties takes me to this system property screen, which normally I would only be able to access through my control panel. So right mouse clicking on my computer and then choosing properties brings us up again very quickly. It's these little shortcuts that are useful to know about as we start using Windows because we're going to have to find out ways, and you may be asked on your CompTIA exam, how to find the system properties. You can go to Start, you can click on Control Panel, you can click System, or you can right mouse click on My Computer and click Properties. 
going to need to know that. So when you get your Windows desktop up and running, make sure you go through different ways of how to access pieces of information and maybe ask that on the exam. Whenever we're moving around the hard drive, around the network, and we're in our Windows environment, we're using something called Windows Explorer. Now, the term Explorer is used on a lot of different applications. So this is a good time to make a delinearity between these two. There is an Internet Explorer, which is a Windows browser, allows us to go out to different websites. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Windows Explorer. This is the integrated capabilities built into our system. For instance, if I double click on My Documents, this is the Windows Explorer that pops up that allows us to explore what's on our system, what files are there, what folders happens to be there, how we can connect and disconnect from other folders that happen to be on the network or share files that are on our system. So if you ever hear anybody saying, go into your Windows Explorer and right mouse click on a particular folder so that you can then perform some other functions. That's what they're talking about, the Windows Explorer. We've talked a little bit about using the network and finding things over the network. And that's one of the great capabilities about having these desktop systems we have today and the network connectivity that we have. But every operating system needs to provide you with a way to connect to resources over the network and disconnect from resources. And of course, open up resources on your own system so that other people can connect to your device. And we've got that on our desktop with something called My Network Places. If I double click on My Network Places, it brings up a list of different tasks that I can perform over the network. I can add a new network place that's on my system. I can view the network connections I already have. Maybe we'd like to view the workgroup computers that are in our system. And by clicking on that, I can see that in this Pegasus workgroup, that's the name of the workgroup that I'm running here in my office, there are two systems in the Pegasus workgroup. There's a, a Daedalus system and a Prometheus system. And so I can go into these computers and look around on them. If I double click on Prometheus, it takes me into Prometheus. And you can see it puts the name here with two backslashes there before the name. And I can go either to the printers and faxes on that device, or I can look at the tasks that have been scheduled on that computer. And if I drill down into the printers, then I can see there's a VMware virtual printer that I've designed in the system that connects back to my physical printer. If you're connecting to a device over the network in a large enterprise, you may connect to a system that has many different printers here. And that's the way that you can set up a way that you could connect to, print to other devices, share other files. And it's all done from this Windows, the My Network Places in your Windows desktop. Up to this point, we've looked at components on the Windows desktop that you might use every day, things like My Computer and My Network Places. But there are some other pieces available on this desktop that you'll find yourself using again and again as part of an a certified professional. One of those is the command prompt. If we click on the Start menu here, we've got a lot of different options here. And generically, the way that we get to the command prompt is through the Run command, and we type CMD. And that brings up a separate screen that is our command prompt. This is what's really running behind the scenes. This is a command line access view into the operating system itself. Many aspects of this are based on an older Microsoft operating system called DOS, Disk Operating System. But this is, although similar to DOS, this is not DOS. It's the Windows command prompt. And you'll hear it referred to that. So instead of going to your Windows Explorer and listing out all of the files that are there, you can go to the command prompt and type dir for directory, and it will list out all the files that are there in this very unusual looking format if you've never seen anything like this before. But once you become accustomed to using the command prompt, you find that it gives you a lot of different options. For instance, if you needed to, uh, after hours, connect to a system, perform some tasks, and disconnect from that system, and you didn't want to click around the screen, you could set up batch files that, at the command prompt, could simply use text to be able to connect out, transfer information, and disconnect from those devices. So almost everything that we can do, and perhaps even a little bit more than we can do from our graphical view, we can also do at the command prompt if we know the right commands to use and to look at. So we'll be coming back to the command prompt. There's a whole section of the CompTIA exam that goes into using the command prompt and the different options that are available to use as an a certified professional. As you're working with operating systems and you're adding new device drivers and you're looking at the configuration of your system, you'll often go into what's called the control panel. So this is referenced quite a bit whenever you're working at our particular level with adding and removing and replacing different components. The control panel is in the Start menu under Settings there's an option for Control Panel. The control panel itself provides us access into these detailed customization features that are on the system. Maybe we'd like to configure 
adding or removing different applications from our system. Maybe we would like to set the date and the time or modify the way that the display works for us on the screen. All of those lower level administrative or maintenance type functions are in the control panel. So we can really come here to do everything. I mentioned earlier we right mouse clicked on my computer and chose properties and it brought up the system properties view. Notice we have a system icon in our control panel and if I double click on that it brings up exactly the same system properties view. So a lot of the things that we can get to from the control panel we can also get to from other places. But if you're never quite sure where it is you can go straight to the start pull down the start menu here at the bottom, choose settings and go right to control panel and you'll be able to find everything you need all in one place. The last thing I want to show you on the Windows desktop in this overview of the Windows operating system is something called the Registry Editor. This is used primarily by technicians. This is rarely used by people who are using Windows day to day on the desktop to perform their basic functions. And what it does is allow us access into the very detailed views of how Windows is configured. And as a caveat to this, I'll let you know if you go into your registry and you start deleting or changing things, you can very easily make your system unusable. You'll have to reload the entire operating system. So if you're using the registry, know right out of the gate that this is something that is, is very easy to, to really mess up things on your operating system. So be very careful about the things that you're changing in there. Make sure you have the proper backups and are able to restore things if things aren't working the way you would expect. The way that you launch the registry in Windows XP is you go to the run command and you type reg edt32. Now you'll also hear people refer to something called reg edit, reg edit. Just type in reg edit. In Windows XP, those two commands do exactly the same thing. In Windows 2000, which is an important part of the A plus certification, the reg edit command and the reg edt32 are two different things. They look very similar, but for the most part, Microsoft recommends in Windows 2000, reg edt32 has the most number of functions available, and reg edit is only used for searching around. Microsoft changed that in Windows XP, so you can type in either thing. It brings up a single command. It's a little bit less difficult to understand and use in Windows XP. So we'll just be uh, because we're so used to doing it in Windows 2000, you'll find most people will just type in reg edt32 and hit enter and it brings them up to this registry editor screen. Now on the left side of our screen is my computer and I've got these main main folders that are set up. These are called hives in the registry editor. And I can see H key classes root, H key current user, local machine, users and current config. So I've got these main categories of configurations that are set up. For instance, if I go into some of the control sets that are in my system and I start clicking on a few different pieces, you can start to see different things that will pop up and think things that we recognize. For instance, I'm now in this My Computer, H key Local Machine, System, Control Set 001, Services, and there are all these services that are now configured on my computer that I can go in and change the configuration of. I could make some very specific changes. And as I select things on the left side, you'll notice the configuration options themselves show up on the right side of the screen. So changing the pieces in here, you're really changing configuration settings of the operating system. And this is where you'll find if you ever need to fix a problem, you go to the Microsoft Knowledge Base, Microsoft will say, start your registry editor, go to this particular Hive section in the registry editor and make this change or add this new function. If you right mouse click, you can see you can add a new key and you can add a new string value, binary value, D word, multi-string or expandable string value. We're not going to talk about what each one of those things does in this video, but when you're working through this knowledge base article, it will tell you which one to choose and you can add a new string value. You can type in new string value and then you can put in the string value you would like into this view. And you'll find yourself as you're doing more and more editing, more and more troubleshooting in Windows, that you'll start to use this a lot more and you'll become very familiar with taking advantage of it. The registry editor itself allows you to do imports and exports of different connections in the hive so that if you're about to make a big change, you may want to save that off so that if it doesn't work, you can load it back in again. It's very easy to do. Notice that you can also connect to registries across the network. So if you're troubleshooting somebody's system and they happen to be in another city, you can connect to their registry remotely, make the change you need to make there, and then get their system back up and running. So extremely useful for doing your troubleshooting purposes.
Well, it was a very quick overview in a short period of time, but we went through quite a bit. We looked at the Windows graphical user interface itself and looked at our start menu and the different trays at the bottom and understood how, how to launch some of these capabilities. We went into My Computer and the Windows Explorer and My Network Places, which gave us insight into not only the computer that we were using, but the resources available to us across the network. And then we went into more of the A-plus type functions at the command prompt, our control panel, and our registry. For many more videos to learn a lot more about the Windows operating system, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.